All right, we do it. I want to so I want to be out of here so we can go eat. For sure. Go to Korean barbecue. Hell yeah, we we'll make this I mean? short and sweet. Yes, Just sir. like me. Rikishi Entertainment. We got it. Mm-hmm. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD, and we want to thank Knox Pro Entertainment. That's right, Knox Pro Entertainment, located in Van Nuys, California, A. They are the main sponsor. If you want to find out everything Knox Pro, just log on to the website, www.knoxpro.com. Big Quiche, how are you feeling tonight? Man, I'm here. You know, it's another show day for us, and I'm excited to be here, but... Yeah, you know, I just got back from Atlanta. Mm, Atlanta, did, GA. Yes, sir. Uh, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, I had to get my Waffle House out there. Okay. Big shout out to the Waffle House out there. Mm-hmm, Always mm-hmm. taking care of your boy out there. And, you know, big shout out to uh, Charlie's Collectibles out there in, uh, you know, uh, um, in Georgia. Uh, make sure you guys check them out on my Instagram. You know, they took care of your boy. I mean, the fans came out there loud and proud. Mm. Again, you know, my Funko Pop was a hit. Not only that, Big Quiche, I got, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I got to, yeah. can I see that? We got a brand new figure over here. Can I please oh, see that, that Big yeah, Quiche? Yeah, there you go. Look at uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, what do we got right here hot off yeah. the press? We have got the new Sultan action figure, which you can find anywhere right now. Oh, you can go on my website now. Yes, sir, you can go. That's, that's, that's where you need to go. That's 120 where you- signed. 120 sign? 120 sign, and guess what? Free delivery. Free delivery. Free signed delivery. by the man himself. Now, Big Kishi, yeah. when you sign the Sultan figures, what do you sign as? The Sultan, Kishi, Jew? What do you, what do you oh, sign as? Oh, most definitely. I signed the Sultan on there. You can go ahead and advertise there. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, you know, All right. Yeah. Look at that fan uh, boy right there. There he goes. So, okay. And so, then, I sign it as the Sultan. Okay. But then I'll put underneath WWE Hall of Famer. So okay. people know it's me, right? But... Yeah, you know, hopefully one day that, you know, that character will probably, you know, go into the Hall of Fame. I don't know. But, you know, um, it's a it's a great one of my best action figures. I know I said that I like the Funko Pop, which I do. The Funko Pop is special because it's my first one. But the Sultan action figure, this is another part of my character's that I had back in the day, but these things here, man, this is you know, dope. exclusive on, yeah. uh, you know, you can get them on uh, uh, Target. That's where we got them, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of the fans were telling me up there in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Okay. That's where it's at. Stone, Stone Mountain, Mountain Georgia. Georgia at Charlie's Collectible. They came with all these uh, Sultan action figures and uh, Rikishi Funko Pop, so it was a great time. Great people. Make sure you stop by and check out, you know, uh, Charlie's Collectible out there in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Speaking of the yeah. Sultan, you just released another track. And, oh, man. And you did it from the perspective of the Sultan, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, that, that, like was, I, that was dope. A little Sheiky Baby sample in there yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. And I thought the way you, the, uh, the way you wrote the, you wrote the lyrics with the, through the eyes of the Sultan, I've never seen that done before. I haven't even heard of that. that I yeah. thought that was dope. Um, the beat was a banger as always, and I know you got more beats on the way. We're going to talk well, about right, that. I, I got to give a shout out to Frankie. Yeah. You know, Frankie and my man right there, one and a half. Valentine. Man. Yeah, Mike. I don't know. I'm going to have to have Mike change his uh, Instagram because I get confused. Sometimes he get mad at me because I don't tag him on there. <laughs> I don't mean to. I just, don't get hot, I can't, Frank. I, yeah, yeah, I just can't hot. remember one M. You got a you lot know? going on. Yeah, I, I got, got a lot got going salt on. You action so. figures, Funko Pops. Come yeah. on, Frank. You can't remember everything. Give and the so, big man a little you know, leeway. Uh, you know, I got to give shout out to my team, you know. Uh, yeah. We try to get in, get in here because every time, you know, my scheduling is tight. Mm-hmm. So we usually will come in here and we'll just knock out a couple of recording songs. And then we go into, you know, to what we're doing today, the podcast. And so with that, man, I'm so, you know, when we came out with the first track, you know, Dynasty Forever mm-hmm. with the Wu-Tang Tramp mm-hmm. uh, uh, song uh, beats, it was, you know, hard to even put out anything less than that. Right, you know, and this album it, it, it's it's personal to me because we picked the beats that I like that it was old school for me that you know what I loved about uh, uh, hip hop, mm-hmm. and there was always in each beat a special moment, you know, with the artist and and a special time in my life riding on the road, uh, be it with some of my you know teammates or family members or sometimes just myself, and then you know I just wanted this album to kind of you know you know, reflect on the life of the family, myself, 
you know, you know, the Bay Area of uh, just another banger. You just heard it coming through. Yes, I heard the and, exclusive uh, you know, little I, sneak peek right little, here. Little sneak peek. Mm -hmm. And this one here, man, you know, this one here, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, the whole Bay Area hears this and uh, it's, uh, it's the right song or it can be played at all the games in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. You know, I've mentioned all the names of the, all the teams in the Bay Area. I'm, listen, I'm Bay Area to the core. Mm -hmm. Inside my blood bleeds Bay Area. Yes, sir. And so I only thought that, you know, it's only fitting for, get, for Big Keith to, you know, drop a song about, you know, the Bay Area. So y'all get ready, man, because the Bay Area, we come and stand up. Man, it, it, it's another banger, no doubt about it. But going yeah. back to your song that you released about the Sultan, that got your name trending world oh, it did. Wide, on Twitter. Yes, sir. I know you're you know, a busy I don't man. Check all I was that. just gonna say, I know you don't check yourself. Yeah. You don't go online looking up your name, but I'm here to tell you. Okay. You were trending worldwide. Rikishi Fatu was trending. Yeah. And um, I mean, mad. It was about the this track. Right. And certain lyrics from this track made news. Well, you know what? I I this song was personal. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning that the beat from this song was on a personal level with my friend Iron Sheik, you know, rest in peace. Uh, he thought it was an Iranian song <laughs> when he heard the beat out of that, you know what I mean? And I've never seen Sheik start bobbing his head like he was with it with the hip-hop, you know? And so when I introduced him to that, you know, the lean back, big shout-out to Fat Joe and Terror Squad, the whole crew, mm -hmm. you know, much love to y'all. But they had a part of my, you know, traveling on the road there, that was one of the songs, you know, Lean Back was a hit. And so for Iron Sheik to hear that, you know, when he started moving to that, because he thought that part in the in the song was like Iranian Middle Eastern type mm -hmm, of vibe. Mm -hmm. So I figured, you know what, man, you know, it just thought about my my buddy, man, and we just put it down. I got together with, it was Frankie, man. I said, we need to, you know, do something with this beat here, you know, and, and this is what I'm feeling, you know, and... Here it is. It was just out of fun. You know, every record, every song that we put out, hey, man, it's just out of fun. It's, it's, it's my way of showing, you know, the attachment I have to hip-hop. You know what I mean? And and the certain beats that, and certain songs that we pick, mm -hmm. it, it's it's personal to me. So I hope you fans out there like it. Hey, you know, if I made the top ten up there, well, mm -hmm. hey, mm -hmm. get ready because we coming for another banger after banger. Well, I can't wait. Yeah. I cannot wait for that album. I tell you what, we're gonna go to a, a real quick commercial break. When we come, come back, we're I know you're busy and you don't you haven't been able to keep up, so I'm gonna inform you. A lot has been going on. A lot happened at SmackDown, going okay. into the backlash into Monday Night Raw, and we're here to talk about it. We return with more off the top with Rikishi Fatu. Yeah, yeah. Rikishi Fatu, off the top. We're coming right back. Okay, I'm glad I just went the f first 10 minutes with a booger in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Good rib, Frank. <laughs> yeah, nobody just say, hey, wipe, wipe your nose. <laughs> All right, yeah. You think it's a problem, yeah. but it's really snot. <laughs> We are back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fontu. Now, Big Kish, uh, SmackDown was live from Lyon, France. And let me tell you, mm. uh, me personally, I have not been able to sit down and watch uh, SmackDown in a long time, but I was able to. I was on the road. I was in a hotel, and I turned on the TV, and boom, um, there's just the, the crowd was going bananas out there. I don't know where this was at, but then I realized it was overseas real quick because the crowds out there, they're a little different. Uh, there was the RKO show. RKO mm. and Kevin Owens had their deal. Paul Heyman comes out and interrupts them. Yeah. And from behind, Sola Sokoa yeah. and Tama Tonga, they jump uh, RKO and Kevin Owens okay. leading into Backlash. Now, mm. at Backlash, the world saw a brand new debut into the Bud line. And now, please, I've never said that. I've never seen this name. Maybe you can help me with it. Is it yeah. Tonga Loa? Tonga Loa. You did it right. Can we get yeah. a, a yee? Yee. Yee. Awesome. So, so, yeah, so Tonga Loa debuts, and okay. that, of course, is the brother of Tama Tonga and the son of Haku. Right. What are your thoughts? Yes, man, I say the bloodline just got even stronger, don't you? Yes, sir. I mean, we all know the legendary Haku, what this man can do. And, you know, when uh, when you got those two kids, his son, you know, I, I say, you know, again, once again, bloodline is the timeline. 
You know, I love how they're able to, you know, step right into that position right there. You know, it's not like uh, those boys are not ready, Tama and uh, Tangaloa. You know, they've been uh, big superstars in uh, Japan mm -hmm. for many a years. And, you know, I, I personally text them, like, I'm so happy that they're there, you know, home. I like to call WWE home all the time. Right. Because that's all I know. Right. And it, it, to them to be able to be there, especially uh, uh, Tamatonga, you know, this is his first time, I believe, uh, signing with the company. Tangaloa was there before, way back. But right, right. To see these boys right there where they need to be and in the right program with the right people, man, the family has just got stronger. You know, back in the day when Aku and myself were, these kids were little kids just like my kids, you know? And, of course, you know, they know each other from that. But as they grew up, you know, everybody went their way, you know, went out to Japan, the others stayed here. And then years later, here it is. You know, so it's a good thing. You know, I was happy to, you know, I, I only seen this on on uh, on my Instagram because people tag me on there. Right. And so th they look great. You know, I mean, with Solo in the middle and those two on the side, you know, with uh, Paul, it, it just, there's no flaws in the bloodline. You know, I just, what what is it? I, I like call it, uh, some people are tagging it Bloodline 2.0. Mm. It's a pretty good name. Yes, pretty sir. Pretty cool. Yes, sir. But, you know, it's a, it's a good look, you know. But now you, you can just almost, you can almost tell the storyline was going to happen. WrestleMania is going to be in Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sin City. Oh, man. Come on. That's oh. less. How cool would that be? Oh, man. How cool would that be? Cooler I mean, than the other side of the pillow. There's, there's a much, I mean, Jacob hasn't even hit. I, I, Zilla I was, Fatu hasn't even hit. I was, gonna, I was totally going to get to you that. You see what I'm saying? Because I, look at the 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 the, uh, the playing field now. We got three on this side and on the other side. I mean, we don't even know where Jimmy's been. Jimmy's been out right. of the picture since they took him out originally. And and then Jay, of course, is having an amazing run right now. Oh, my goodness. His entrance is, is off the charts right now. You know, I am so happy, you know, to see my son there, Jay. You know, to test the waters. We talked about this back in the day with both of them. You accomplished so much in the tag team uh, competition, right? There's only so many people that you can test your skills with and can dance with, draw money with. And they've been doing that so many years for 16 plus years. And then, you know, it was this talk, you know, came to where sometimes, you know, uh, keep in mind, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't not stop thinking about, you know, maybe, you know, separating, you know, just test your skills as a single, you know, wrestler. And because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'll make sure I don't have a booger in my nose. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, you want to, you know, give them that, uh, let them experience that hop opportunity of what it feels like to be a single wrestler. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, you know, when you're blowed up and you're tired, there's no brother back there to tag the to get you a breather, you know, and, right. and you want to be able to go out there and test your skills. And, you know, I have no doubt that, you know, even when Jimmy comes back, if he decides to move forward on on his own, you know, these these boys, they're, they're already prepped for single competition. They're prepped for entertainment. They're prepped for, you know, for the main event, you know, and the only thing was, was stopping was just an opportunity, you know, and sometimes, you know, you know, again, this is just Kishi talking, mm -hmm. you know, from my experience of, you know, it's almost sometimes you feel that the promo I cut back in the day 25-something years ago, that the Island Boys were always held down. You know what I mean? All the way from my uncles, the high chief Peter, my via, we were always held down. You know, even that was a storyline, but when you walk through it and you live it, you know, I always say this even here at the Academy of Knox Pro, because not everybody's fit to be in that storyline when politicking comes, right? But there is one thing, Joey, that people or booker or promoter that can never, ever take away from you, and that's your talent in the square circle. Win the fans, be entertainment, I guarantee you they're going to write you in somewhat of a storyline. Why? Because you become a fan favorite, whether, whether it be a good person, a good guy, a heel or a baby face. Mm -hmm. You're getting a reaction from the fans. Therefore, we need to do something with you. 
you know, we need to throw some, uh, you know, put together some merchandise because that's all revenue, you know. And so at the end of the day, you know, this is how you able to figure yourself in when you're not one when they're not wanting to figure in or they don't know where to figure in, figure you in. Yes, sir. Right. So yes, sir. it's you know, the power that you have. It's always your work in the squared circle. Yes, sir. You know, and be a, be a good businessman. Be a good uh, person where not not a not a. You know what I mean? You're, yes, sir. You're still politicking because that's what everybody does back there. But you gotta, you know, be you know, be good. Like be yourself. You know, if you're not a snake, don't be a snake. You know, if you, if, if you're used to telling the truth all the time, then stick with that. Don't change. Don't, don't make the business change you. Uh, you know, because you're getting this push or. Or blah blah blah. Now you feel you're above everybody else. You always got to stay humble. Yes, sir. Always. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And speaking of the squared circle, your son yeah. Jay just advanced to the second round in the King of the Ring tournament. So you know that calls for a celebration. Let's All say, right. Drink Master, you. All right. What do we got here, Drink Master? We got ourselves a good old tequila sunrise. Ooh, Ooh tequila sunrise, and we got a cherry. Hmm. Ah. All right. All right. All right. Cherry. There you go. Mungwea. All right, Mungwea. Tequila Sunrise. Oh. Oh, this is delicious. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, buddy. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> this is absolutely... I'm like Tony the Tiger now. Great. great. All right. So, yes, so your son advances to the second round. He beat uh, Finn, uh, Finn Baylor, and uh, he's that much closer to being... Uh, the King of the Ring. Uh, so what is what happens after that? After King of the Ring? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what, what is that? You know, uh, I know King of the Ring, but okay. Usually, what do you, you see? I, I see him go. That's just one yeah. step closer to getting to the top, into the top. Yeah. Getting that uh, shot at the title and eventually becoming main event at, at main event at uh, WrestleMania. Hopefully. Yes, sir. Yeah, that'll be great. You know, but I mean, okay, let's uh, let's see how far Jay goes. Okay, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, obviously, he's a fan favorite. I seen, I thought it was Bray Wyatt's entrance all over again. You know, I seen him show it. Uh, you know, at uh, they showed a, a deal on Instagram from WWE's account, and it was just like you know Bray Wyatt's entrance all, all over. You see, yeah. you see my son out there doing what he's doing, and you know. It's, it's good to be able to see him enjoying himself out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that, that's the experience I'm talking about. It's like, okay, now you're, getting your own, you're, you're out there by yourself. Nobody else is out there but you. And you get to feel that magic, right? And that's the magic that sometimes, you know, you can't wait to share with other people that are close to you, your friends or your family. And then you're doing that, and you're letting us know, man, this is how my interest feels in it. So, yeah, you know, big shout-out to, you know, all the fans and everything for getting behind Jay. You know, that's all I hear when I do my appearances all over the country is a yeet, yeet, yeet. I said, all right, I'll give you a yeet. Give me a yeet. <laughs> there it is. So. Speaking of the fans and enjoying themselves, we're going to back up a little bit to the, um, the SmackDown in Lyon, France. So this, these crowds were going crazy. Yeah. And it caught my eye from across the room. I was like, where is this crowd at? Because they were they were hot, hot, hot. Well, you know what? It's, let me just, uh, you know, overseas crowd? Mm -hmm. Dude, I mean, it's nothing like here in the States. They just, you know, they go bananas for wrestling over there. You know, and I can only speak on WWE, right? I've never been for any other company. But the WWE come there, you know, it, the, the reception you get as a performer just really makes you love what you do. You know, you're tired, you flew 15 hours to go there, you know, and then you finally get there and just... Uh, the magic of the fans from when that, you know, that bus pulls up from behind. Everybody gets out. There's just jam-packed of fans out there calling your name. And, and you know, it, it it fuels you. It, it makes you, if you were tired then, you know when, by the time you, you're music kid and you're coming out in that arena, you cannot really feel the electricity from the fans. 
And then you just get to, you know, that second energy, right? Yes, sir. Time for time to get out there and show mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you sometimes, you know, when you feed off the energy of the fans, it, you, there's no there's no feeling of you being tired. And that's what, you know, that's what UK, Europe, you know, overseas, I mean, you name it. All across overseas, like, they treat wrestlers as if they're like rock stars out there, you know, and... I know WWE, it's a, it's a good thing that they went out to France. Hopefully, they're able to go to other different places mm -hmm. that's never been, you know, because it's important that, you know, a lot of the world get to experience what they always see on TV, you sure. know? Um, so these crowds were, were, were so hot that, um, you know, you know, Disco Inferno, uh, yeah. Glenn Gliberti, yeah. uh, he, he had put out a tweet that, it was, that their interaction was really annoying. And, um, you know, I, w I w thought about it, you know, I wanted to get your take on it because, yes, you know, I know <laughs> I know. on one hand, as, as a worker, you want anything other than, than nothing. You want silence. You want some kind of a reaction. But what if there are reactions so strong and then it feels like it has nothing to do with your match? Would that throw you off? Does that uh, uh, bother you at all? Or you just, you know, as long as they're reacting, you don't care. Or you want them to enjoy themselves. What's your, what's your take on that? So he didn't like the the fans react because they're rea okay. So whenever the, 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 whenever the the ref <laughs> counted like one, yeah. two, th there was a chant that would follow and it, it would drag yeah. on a lot. And they did it every single two count. So I was I've never seen this before. So he put out a tweet that you know it is so annoying. And of course every the internet's really go after uh, Disco Inferno. I've always liked Disco Inferno, um, but they they really go after him. And uh, he just put out that it was so annoying. So I just want to know what your take is. Do you think that when they have these chants and they're going really, uh, you know, really enjoying themselves, do you think that's <laughs> distracting to you as a worker or uh, you don't yeah. care? You channel out. You do your deal. I, I, first of all, uh, you know, <laughs> Disco, you're smart. Uh, hopefully you're smart. <laughs> I mean, you've been in the business long enough. You, uh, If I'm a family of six yeah. and I paid all those euros <laughs> to come through, mm -hmm. hey, man, if I want to take a shit on the aisle, I'm going to take a <laughs> shit on the aisle. I, I mean, come on now. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Hey, I'm assuming Disco's smart. You know, he's with my dog, Conan. You know, I love Conan. K-Dog. K-Dog and stuff. But, you know, hey, I, well, let, let's hopefully, you know, somebody, you know, y'all, uh, I guess, I don't know, attention or... You know what I mean? You you smart. He's been in the business for a while, man. I mean, you know, this is what fans do. You, you don't tell the fans what to do. Right. They're going to tell the wrestlers what to do. Right, right. You know what I mean? And if you're a smart worker, you're going to work towards that. Right, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, that's you're it. You're going to play to it. Yeah. It's called sports entertainment. Yes. Let me go on and just rewind this for you, Disco. It's called <laughs> sports entertainment, my man. So, no, you know, no, no disrespect. And I love Disco, but... Damn, you know what I mean? Like, I knew this was smart, but, you know, just when you're posting out some I'm telling you one thing. Yeah. If I'm the man that's, you know, I work all week, uh -huh. all month to save up for these damn WWE tickets, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And my wife and my kids just killing me, mm -hmm. you know? Got to get the hot dogs, you know, the chips and all that, popcorn. Mm -hmm. That don't, that, you know, that's not counting the yeet, uh, merchandise. <laughs> that's right. You see what I'm saying? Yes, that's sir. not counting the bloodline merchandise. Yes, <laughs> I'm broke. You ain't going to tell me what the yellow scream in there, man. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, do you, dog. There it is from Big Keith, man. Do you, so, man. Do you. Go on and dance around for a little bit, Disco. Man. You just throw on some John Travolta or something, <laughs> you know? So, it's a Saturday Night Fever or something. You know, uh, yeah. you know who, uh, I don't know, depending, depending on who you ask, who's not having a good week, uh, Ric Flair made the news in, in a not-so-good uh, way. Uh, he had a, what do you do now? Uh, he had a little incident with a bar manager called him a <laughs> head, you know, and, and challenged him to a parking lot fight. And challenged him. Oh. <laughs> How old is Ric Flair? Flair? Like, in his 70s, challenging someone to fight in the parking lot is so yeah. badass, I think. I think that's... Uh, but hey, He probably did that. He got his buddies out there waiting to something, you know? You know, but... Uh, you hey, know, he's, he's too old to be... Come on, Rick. Yeah, I mean... Rick, come on, man. You know, uh, he was going at Damn. it with the bartender, and then... and then the, For what? Because like, he because <laughs> he, he wooed in a blind woman's face, like a grandma, like she was blind, and he, he apparently went up to her face and wooed right in her face, and then yeah. they got it on camera and everything. <laughs> the establishment's not going to release the footage because yeah. uh, I think the damage is done. So someone in the audio, uh, the crowd or whatever at the bar leaked it. The footage of Flair calling the guy a d 
head at the bar, and they're just kind of going at it. And, That's all out there, huh? And then somebody else at the bar stood up to Ric Flair, like, you know, I'll take you on in the parking lot. What's up? And Ric Flair was like, like, what did you say to me? It was just, it was just all bad. Come on, man. man. It just wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good. It's like, hey, Rick, hey, Rick, 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 Rick. <laughs> Go on and sit. Give me a couple of seats someplace, dog. Yeah. Come on, what is Rick? Eighty something years old or something? Yeah, but and he started pulling the. I don't know who you are, but you fight. Yeah. Yeah. He started doing all that. <laughs> and he went on. He went on Instagram, and you know, the, you know, told you. Uh, I don't know. You, you know, Mike got him f up off of that, that weed. That's right, man. Oh yeah, yeah he was on some Mike bites or something like that. There's right? something. So you know, I, I don't know, man. Uh, That's it, funny, man. Damn, Rick. Yeah. Nate's your boy. Nate's Nate's Nate's. Come on, Nate. Man, I, come on, Nate. You know, I, you know, I, everybody love you, Nate. Now you got to set that example, dog. <laughs> go on, go on, sit in some place. You know what, Nate? Go to church, man. Go to church. Go over there and find your old Southern Baptist church someplace, you know, and take your ass to church or something, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Go pray for a minute, man, you know? Oh, man. So, yeah. so uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's been an interesting week all the way around. Like, you know, you, uh, you were yeah. trending. Uh, like, I had people at my job who aren't even wrestling fans come up to me and say, like, you know, Rikishi Fatu is trending on Twitter. Yeah. That wasn't the only stuff trending this week either. Speaking of hip hop, there is a huge beef going on right now between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Now I'm not too familiar with Kendrick Lamar, but I know a little bit about about Drake being a DJ myself. You know, doing weddings and whatnot. You know, yeah. people love Drake. Are you a fan of either or? Hey, let me let me. I'm both. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? I'm both for hip hop. You know what I mean? And uh, y'all y'all go ahead if y'all listening, man. Y'all go ahead and squash that, man. I mean, there's so much more life to live. You know what I mean? Hip-hop is music for all of us, man. You know what I mean? You guys became what you are because of the fans that love your music, you know? <laughs> so now, all that work that you guys have put out, you know, as far as the music and so forth, you know what I mean? There's a lot of different youngsters that look up to them, you know what I mean? And, you know, I'm not saying that I'm the greatest or I'm the mm -hmm. perfect this and that, you know what I mean? But... I feel like, you know, uh, music transcends. Okay. Right? I mean, it touches certain people's hearts, you know, whether you're down, you're up, depending on the music that you're... And then, you know, you start to accumulate fans, right? And so once you get, like, at this level here, I never really... I heard about the beef, the diss back and forth, but for me, I'm always thinking records, okay. right? I mean, come on. You know what I mean? There's so much more to do than... The, than to go after each other in this way of fashion. So if in case mm -hmm. the story is true mm -hmm. that somebody has got hurt and shot at uh, uh, Drake's place, mm -hmm. you know, right, let's all get together, man, and, you know, send some prayers. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Because we talking about somebody's baby, man. Yep. Just at the wrong place at the wrong time. And here's the guy here that's going to take the bullet for whatever, you know? Yeah. So I, I just... Y'all need to, you know, again, you know, like I always say, smarten up. Y'all smarten up, man. Y'all come together, squash this shit, because it ain't worth it, man. Yes, sir. Let, let's lighten it up. Let's see. <laughs> if they were in a hardcore match, who do you got to go uh, over, Drake or Kendrick Lamar? Damn. Uh, you know what? I, I, I probably had to go with Kendrick. Okay. You know what I mean? I know Drake's from up there in Canada, uh -huh. right? you know, but, you know, Kendrick, you know, he, he, he from the ghetto. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? He, he from the ghetto. Self. I know he got hands to throw, so, you know, but hey, you know, I, I hope it doesn't ever go that far. Yeah, yeah. That's a good question, and, you know, he, he got the answer there, but all this here is make believe that we, they'll never, ever be able to get into a wrestling mess like that. Hopefully yeah. not, you know? Yeah. For yeah. WrestleMania, I think, yeah, we can probably talk about it, because you know, I'm, I'm sure Triple H would probably book something yes, like that. Yes, absolutely. You know, they're already booking singers up there. You know, you had Little Wayne uh, last uh, WrestleMania. Right. Right. Yep. So I, I, I think uh, I think hip hop and musicians are good uh, addition to the greatest show on earth on the planet, mm -hmm. and that's WrestleMania. Yes, sir. So who knows? Big Keish, I know you're a busy man. You got a lot going on tonight. We're going to sign off here. Mon Wea. Mon Wea. All right. Yes, sir. Do you have any final words? Well, remember this. It's free to be kind to one another. And always, always smarten up. And we out.